Last week, I unboxed and got my first look at the brand new Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 4. Highly anticipated, one we've been wanting to see, especially with this move to a 16 inch display with a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, eight series, 11th gen processors, uh, pretty much a lot of things to like on it. And I was able to put it through its paces for this past week. Let's find out if this is definitely worth your money. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 4. Coming up. Now, as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I want to let you know I'm not being paid by Lenovo. I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this review unit is on loan from Lenovo, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Now, last week when I did my unboxing and first look review, it had a starting price of $1639.20, and the unit that I'm reviewing had a price of about $2,100 or a little bit less, and that was a sale run by Lenovo. Now, unfortunately, that sale price is no longer there and the prices have gone significantly back up. But I would keep an eye on the link below because I know Lenovo does run a lot of sales. The prices tend to fluctuate. So be very vigilant and keep an eagle eye out for the latest pricing. Again, check out that link below for that latest pricing. And the other thing that I'm seeing is a ship date of four plus months. That's a pretty bad situation, of course, because of the supply constraints. But I have been hearing stories that even though it's showing four plus months, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the actual time you'll have to wait. People have gotten within a few weeks. It just depends on the supply chain. Now, I do cover a lot in my unboxing and first look review. That video dropped last week, as I mentioned. I'll leave a link in this description below for those that didn't check it out. Now, the design and build quality on this are excellent. Now, I did see one review or one video out there on YouTube where the reviewer had some issues with some build quality. There was some creaking sound by the keyboard deck. I did not experience any of that in my review unit. It has been rock solid, no creaking whatsoever. Now, I did open this up and I did put that lid back on on the bottom. And again, still no creaking even after I upgraded the internals. Now, this is a thin and light 16 inch laptop and at 3.99 pounds or 1.81 kilograms for the non touch 2.5K model. Definitely portable, easy to take with you on the go. And as I mentioned in that video, it is super easy to get inside. All you need to do is loosen the captive Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. Yep, it's that easy. There are two SOTUM slots for you to upgrade the RAM yourself, and that's always good. I like the user accessibility and upgradability. Now, my unit has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 RAM. It can support up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Now, this is running in single channel mode, and I will talk about that in just a moment as far as upgrading it to run in dual channel mode. But you have the ability to get two 8 gigabyte sticks when you check out. That is a better option in my opinion. And you'll be running in dual channel mode right out of the gate. And the good news is it's the rank 8, which is the faster RAM as opposed to the rank 16. That's good to see. Now, wanting the better performance, I added an additional 16 gigabytes of RAM for a total of 32. And yes, it does make a difference, as you will see in the numbers in just a moment. Now, as far as the SSD is concerned, my unit has 512 gigabytes of PCIe NVMe SSD storage. It's PCIe 4, which is going to get some really fast reads and writes, as you can see from these excellent results. Now, models without the vapor chamber cooling, and that would be the one with the UHD graphics or one with the RTX 3050 Ti graphics, that will have a second SSD slot and will have room for the optional 5G. Anything with an RTX 3060, 3070, or even 3080 will not have that second SSD drive and will not have room for the optional 5G because they employ vapor chamber cooling. There's just not enough room. It is a Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 combo. One thing to note, it is soldered into the motherboard. So if you have to swap it out later on, you don't have that option. Would have been better to have been slotted in. Now, it also has the optional Qualcomm Snapdragon X55 5G modem if you go with either the UHD or the one with the RTX 3050 Ti GPU. Again, that's the ones that will have room since it won't have the vapor chamber cooling taking up the space. 
So far, it doesn't look like the 5G has been available just yet. If that should change, I will let everybody know in the description below. Okay, let's go over the ports. We're going to start off on the left side where you get your power in port to Thunderbolt 4 USB-C 4 ports. Now, these are full service ports. They can support data charge and display out. That's good to see. It has an HDMI 2.1 port and finally a microphone headphone combo jack to round out the ports on the left side. Moving over to the right side, you get a full size SD card reader. Now, one thing to note, the cards do not sit exactly flush with the unit. It sticks out a bit as you see here. You get two USB-A ports and finally a Kensington Lock Nano port to round out the ports on this laptop. The only thing I would say is missing is maybe an RJ45 Ethernet port. That, of course, you can add via a dongle, which is not included in the box. The X1 Extreme Gen 4 now has a 90 watt hour battery and it did 8 hours and 42 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. What does this mean in real world mixed usage? You're looking anywhere from 7 to 8 hours depending on what you're doing of course and that's not bad actually. And it takes about an hour and 35 minutes to give you a full charge with the included 230 watt power adapter and it does support rapid charge. Now, for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. The hinges are pretty sturdy on this, pretty rigid. I like that. Now, as far as this keyboard is concerned, I heard some criticism around the internet on it. I'm not sure where this is coming from. I actually really love this keyboard. It's a ThinkPad keyboard. It has 1.5 millimeters of key travel. I've had no issues as far as long-term typing. It has been great. And it's also a spill-resistant keyboard. So if you spill some water, coffee on it, it has a chance to survive. That's good. Now, it does have a two-stage backlight that works really well. The keys light up white, the keys are black, the LED lights up white, no trouble differentiating or seeing the contrast. And the glass precision touchpad, to me, worked very well. I thought it was very responsive, scrolling was great, and so were the gestures. I've had no issues whatsoever with it. And it also has the track point for those that like it. It's a good pointing device, but I think it's more of a relic of the ThinkPad brand. It's part of its DNA, not going anywhere anytime soon. Now, to me, the display is excellent. Yes, I do have that entry-level display. It's a 2.5K non-touch IPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600, a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, and I'm absolutely loving it. It's a nice, bright display. They claim it gets as bright as 400 nits. I actually measured higher than that. I measured 407, even better. And add to that the fact that it is a matte display, no glare, no reflections as you would normally get with a glossy display, not present present here all working well on that front now it does have the really deep blacks it has some good white points it has excellent contrast and it also has a low delta e score of 1.24 making this a color accurate display and it covers the color gamut very well 100 srgb 75 percent adobe rgb 77 percent of the dcip3 wide color gamut and 70 percent ntsc so this is a decent choice if you are a content creator looking to do lightroom photoshop video editing and of course even color grading although not the best in that regard i would go with the higher resolution display the uhg plus if you want to do that and because they moved to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, they're able to put a bigger display. It's now 16 inches and you get smaller bezels, especially a smaller bottom bezel over last year's model. So this is the front facing camera on the brand new Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 4. And finally, we have a 1080p 30 frames per second webcam. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? of the internal mics. Now, one thing to note, this is not a Windows Hello camera. But that means you cannot log in with face recognition, but that's okay. You still get a fingerprint scanner that will allow you to do that. The power button doubles as the fingerprint scanner and it's working well so far. But again, I want to know what you think about this uh, 1080p webcam. Will it be good for Zoom and all your work from home needs? Let me know in that comment section below. Now, there are two top firing speakers. They're Dolby Atmos speakers, two watts each. And I love top firing speakers, so you don't get that muddled sound from bottom firing speakers that you normally get. These are top firing towards you, and you're going to get a more full, richer sound. These sound good. Now, they're not quite as good as the XPS 15 or the XPS 17, which I think are the best as far as the Windows laptops are concerned, and still not as good as the MacBook Pro 16, which I think is the best. 
Now, I have the unit running the Core i7-11800H processor. That's an 8-core, 16-thread processor. It's also available in a Core i9. It's also available with vPro. I don't think you need to go with that Core i9. I think most people will be perfectly satisfied with that Core i7-11800H processor. And as you can see from these numbers, as running in dual-channel mode, the numbers are very good. Now, as you can see, the differences between single-channel and dual-channel is a big difference. The numbers in terms of the multi-core score in terms of the single core score this definitely does make a difference so when the lenovo sent me the unit with 16 gigabytes one stick running in single channel mode i quickly put in that second stick because i wanted to see the difference what kind of performance you can expect running in dual channel mode and it goes without saying i'm not disappointed and I know many of you are out there looking at some of its competition to see, well, what is the comparison between the two? And as you can see from these numbers, the X1 Extreme Gen 4 more than holds its own. It has some pretty decent numbers, especially when you do move it up to 32 gigabytes of RAM running in dual channel mode. It definitely made a big difference. Check out some of these numbers. Now, for those of you wondering whether you can play games on this, you definitely can if you lower the settings, but keep in mind, this will thermal throttle to reduce some of the heat that's generated on this, and I'll get into that in a moment, but the reduced clock speed will result in lower gaming performance, but it's not terrible, and as you can see, if you lower the settings, you could definitely get some playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles. Now, you do have the option to connect to an external GPU via one of the two Thunderbolt 4 ports that this has. And when I ran the Prime 95 stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, I have some bad news for you. It does significantly throttle because it does get pretty hot and then it will reduce the clock speeds in order to reduce the temperatures. Now, I noticed it would turbo boost up to about 4.5 gigahertz for about 90 seconds, reaching a core temperature of 97 degrees Celsius. Then it would drop anywhere between 1.73 and 1.97 gigahertz to maintain a cooler 80 degrees Celsius. So you will see significant thermal throttling with this laptop. And I don't think the vapor chamber cooling did as good of a job as it could have under normal circumstances. Now, it does have the dual fans, and they will kick in under heavy load. They are noticeable, but not overly loud to the point where it's unusable, it's too annoying, but they definitely do kick in, and you will notice them when you are stressing this laptop. And because it throttles down so much, it does reduce temperatures, and I didn't notice that the surface temperatures got overly hot. It got a bit warm, but nothing to the point where you can't touch it. That is good in that regard, but again, these reduced clock speeds as a result of the throttling is definitely something to be concerned about. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Gen 4 here for 2021? And I gotta say, I really do like it, although performance will be significantly reduced if you really put this under heavy load. But for normal, everyday tasks, you will be fine. Performance was excellent, as you saw from the numbers. But if you're gonna stress this, if you're gonna do heavy gaming on this, heavy video editing on this, you will see throttling on this laptop and the CPU will not perform as well. Now, as far as that 16 inch, 16 to 10 aspect ratio display, love that move towards that aspect ratio bright sharp everything you'd want it's a matte display no glare no reflections love the fact that it has two thunderbolt four usb-c four ports these are great ports to have versatile allows you to do multiple things with it connecting to multiple monitors thunderbolt docks external gpus and the like love the fact that it has a full-size sd card reader i think it has an excellent port selection love the thinkpad keyboard the touchpad the track point all worked well upgradable ram and ssd is excellent on this i love having that and i love the fact that it has vapor chamber cooling although i thought it could have done a better job in terms of the thermals on this laptop and i also wasn't crazy about the internal mics although it did have a 1080p webcam there's a lot of significant improvements this year with the X1 Extreme Gen 4. Although there are some caveats, as I mentioned, this is still an excellent offering, bringing a lot to the table. So what do you think about this bad boy, X1 Extreme Gen 4? Put it through its paces this past week. Numbers look good. If you're not doing long-term sustained heavy workloads on this, 
you'll be fine. If you're going to be doing that kind of work, you will notice that thermal throttling. So that's something to be aware of. Not unusual, of course, in this thin and light 16-inch laptop category. Now, having said that, the numbers did look good for everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing. It all worked fine. Battery life, you're looking at 8 hours and 42 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, real world mixed usage, I would expect you to get anywhere from six and a half to seven and a half hours, depending on what you're doing. So your mileage may vary. Please keep that in mind. Now the display, I absolutely love it. It's a 2.5K display, that's 2560 by 1600, 400 nits plus in terms of the brightness, so that's good. A matte display, you don't get any glare or reflections that you would get in a highly glossy display. That's not what you get here, and that's great, especially if you're into productivity. Covers the color gamut pretty well, has good color accuracy, uh, really everything you'd want. Now, if you need to have more pixels, if you want even better in terms of color grading, check out the UHD Plus display, which will get as bright as 600 plus nits from what I'm hearing. So that is a nice upgrade if you're into content creation. So you may want to check that out. But of course, beware, you will not do as well in terms of the battery life. Now, pricing has been all over the place since I did unbox this about a week ago where we saw it was on sale. It was at a decent price at the time. Since that time, it has gone back up to the ridiculous realm of pricing. But of course, Lenovo is constantly running sales. So keep your eye out. Keep checking out that link below for the latest pricing because Lenovo does fluctuate their prices quite often. And I anticipate this coming down even more in the near future. So again, check out that link below. But in terms of overall performance and everything you'd want in a 16-inch laptop, this pretty much checks all the boxes with my caveat that if you're going to do any heavy sustained loads, you will notice that throttling and it will affect performance. But for most people who are doing everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, this worked great and I highly recommend it. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.